It's been somewhat of a slow summer for AI. However, AI development is picking up back again, so I'm here to give you the latest news. And given AI pace is picking up once again, I recommend you guys check out my Discord server linked down below. We have a specific section on that server for the latest news, so if you really want to stay up to date, the Discord server is the place to be. Let's start our news off with large language models, aka the type of technology that powers ChatGPT. So, OpenAI has released fine-tuning for their GPT 3.5 Turbo model, which is the model that powers the base, free version of ChatGPT. And they also say that fine-tuning for GPT-4 is on the horizon. As you can see, fine-tuning actually does offer a lot of extra capabilities with these AI large language models, far beyond what you normally can do with regular API access. They actually had a private beta where people could fine-tune models, and this is what they noticed. First, improved steerability. This essentially means that businesses can make the model follow instructions a lot better, like making all the outputs respond in a certain way every single time. The example they list here is pretty basic, just making sure the model always responds in German no matter what. But I'm sure you could make it always respond in a certain dialect like very polite or very rude. Reliable output formatting improves the model's ability to consistently format responses, a crucial aspect for applications demanding a specific response format, such as code completion, for example, or composing API calls. A dev can use fine-tuning to more reliably convert user prompts into high-quality JSON snippets that can be used for their own systems. So yeah, the real actual format of the text response is greatly changed when you fine-tune. Like I mentioned, a custom tone to your overall responses can be done with this. This is a much more open way of utilizing this OpenAI model, so I'm glad to see that they're actually offering fine-tuning for GPT 3.5 Turbo, although I'm sure everything needs to be approved by OpenAI first. As you can see, they have some pretty basic steps, preparing the data, uploading files, creating a fine-tuning job, and then using the fine-tuned model. Now, the pricing actually is a little bit different for this. As you can see, the base models are actually a lot cheaper than these special fine-tuned rates, costing three times as much for training, and a staggering six times as much for the input and output tokens of actually using that fine-tuned model. So it's quite a lot more expensive. But if you're a company or a big dev, maybe this would be worth it. However, you know, open source models are on the horizon here, and that could lead to some serious competition. But overall, OpenAI has made it easier for developers. They can now customize these models like they haven't been able to before, and developers will be able to shape these models to do specific tasks really, really well. Of course, safety is always a concern. Someone might be able to fine-tune a model to do a really horrible thing, so OpenAI is very wary of that. Wider access to powerful AI like this is pretty exciting. However, it doesn't seem like OpenAI is going to be doing what everybody really wants, which is to open-source these models. Fine-tuning allows for the customization of the model's weights, but the core architecture underlying these powerful models remains closed. And this leads us to Meta AI, which has had some open source developments in large language models. So as you guys remember, the Llama 2 large language model by Meta AI was originally released as fully open source, while not as capable of these higher grade GPT 3.5 Turbo and GPT 4 models from OpenAI, Llama 2 was good enough and fully open source, meaning companies like Stability AI immediately modified them and actually made them better right off the bat. And I'll let you guys in on a little secret here. Apparently, the developers that created Llama 2 were really the ones who pushed it to be open source right away and actually threatened to go to other research companies if they didn't make this open source. So good job, devs, for sticking up for the community and really pushing these models to be open. Anyways, Llama 2 actually originally released as a fine-tuned model for chat use cases. So something like ChatGPT, you could talk to it. However, of course, they've fine-tuned it for other cases as well, including code, which is really the big news here. Again, what's cool about this is that it is fully open source. Anyone can download it, anyone can modify and see that core architecture under the hood. And this thing is actually state-of-the-art, being really, really great at coding. You can see this little example here. We type a complex prompt in, and it actually gives us the code, all while still being in that ever-familiar and easy-to-use chat format. Really, really nice to see. It is completely free for both research and commercial use, meaning you can make money off of this thing. 
and it's already built on top of Llama 2 and is available in three different models. The original Code Llama, the foundational code model, Codel Llama, which is a Python specialized model, and Code Llama Instruct, which is fine tuned for understanding natural language instructions, which is what we just saw right up here. In their own benchmark testing, Code Llama outperformed state of the art publicly available large language models on coding tasks. It's like the best. Comes in a few different sizes 7 billion, 13 billion, and 34 billion parameters, respectively, for those models. Trained on 500 billion tokens of code and code related data. And actually, what's really cool too is this 7 billion and 13 billion base models have a fill in the middle capability, meaning you can give it some text before and after and it can fill in that middle. The 7 billion model, like I said, can actually be run on just a single GPU, meaning someone could actually run this thing on their own machine at home and not worry about it. It's fully open source. You can't run a single OpenAI model at home on your own machine because it's not open source at all. The crazy part here is that Code Llama actually performed really well against other AI systems. It actually beat out ChatGPT on both the human eval and the MBPP benchmark. But of course, we will have to see how this really performs in reality as people start to use these models more and more. When it comes to making code, GPT-4 still is the best, but the original ChatGPT 3.5 gets handily beat by this new code llama. People can actually start using this today. You have zero fears of your stuff being leaked out to Meta AI because it's just going to be sitting running on your own GPUs for your company, or if you're a single developer, it's just running on your computer at home. You don't have to worry about that. Remember when ChatGPT first announced and Amazon developers were inputting proprietary Amazon code in to ChatGPT and 10xing their workflows, and then they all got in trouble because you're not supposed to be leaking that proprietary code. Well, now they can actually go back and start 10xing again by using these AI models because these models are open source. This is a huge deal for developers, and OpenAI really needs to watch their back because they're stealing the show when it comes to code now with Meta AI's new Code Llama. Let's dive into some AI art news. So Midjourney finally released their state of the art very region or in painting model. I actually did a full video review on this. I recommend you guys check it out. We did a pretty deep dive and actually discovered some new tips and tricks to make it work a little bit better. But for the subtle changes, it seems to work really, really well. It works simply by just selecting the area inside of an editor that pops up inside of Discord and you type a prompt in. Over time, you can iterate an image and refine it further, adding all kinds of subtle little details that you never would have been able to do with just a single prompt inside of Midjourney. For example, inside of my video, we were actually able to iterate upon this little lemon dude, giving him an extra head, giving him feet, and finally, we actually made him extremely buff, and he's got these giant ripped arms, so it was pretty cool. I think this would be a pretty hard image to generate inside of Midjourney Raw. We also did Walter White here, starting out with him attempting to eat a burger, and obviously Midjourney did not get it first try, so we used in painting and slowly iterated until we got this really nice image of him holding the burger with the McDonald's logo and everything. It was pretty impressive in my opinion. However, this in-painting still has a lot of limitations, more complex edits, such as adding this burger here was a little bit inconsistent. And overall, learning to prompt this thing is definitely a big learning process. It doesn't work like normal mid-journey, and trying to figure out the best ways to remove objects or replace them is definitely in the works. In the end, we pretty much came to the conclusion that mid-journey needs a better interface for utilizing these edits, and a few more tools would be nice. Mid-journey users were pretty happy with this update, and it's a, it's a pretty pretty advanced version of in-painting in comparison to other methods. Of course, a lot of people still prefer stable diffusion and all of the different in-painting capabilities that can be made for very specific types of images. But if you're a mid-journey user, I think this is a massive win overall. In other news, a new AI image generation startup actually launched, and it's coming out swinging. It's called Ideogram AI. Their focus apparently is to create AI tools to enhance creativity, but really right now they have an image generator very similar to something like Dolly or Midjourney. Now, the reason it's actually in the news is because it's pretty good, and there's some people backing this thing that are pretty renowned in the world of AI. The people that are working on this are experts from the likes of Google Brain, you see Berkeley, CMU, and the University of Toronto. And you can see that this thing already is no joke. It's doing text coherently right off the bat, photorealism right off the bat. It's a competitor. 
The text is probably the most sh shocking part, but um, for a first result, for a first punch and a first swing, it's really, really awesome. Ideogram AI has already raised $16.5 million in seed funding. Right now, you can access it through a very simple web interface, but it is on a wait list. I was able to get access though, so if you guys want to see a full video review testing this thing out, comparing it to Mid Journey and the likes, please let me know down in the comments below. I gotta see a bunch of comments or I'm not gonna do it, because lately, the AI image generation doesn't seem to have that much hype behind it. However, I gotta say, this is really, really impressive. I mean, check out this uh, Spaceman Zuckerberg. The famous characters really seem to be a part of it. The photorealism is pretty astonishing, although you can see a little bit of weirdness in the hands here. Midjourney still definitely has an edge on this thing in some specific cases, but it looks like it follows prompts a heck of a lot better than Midjourney, which is Midjourney's main problem. Check this out. I don't think you could do this with Midjourney, and certainly not with such a simple prompt here. We've got the Google logo in the background, Steve Jobs holding up a phone, taking a selfie. Literally the prompt, Steve Jobs taking a selfie at Google Android campus, like dead simple prompts. And you can actually iterate upon previous images to fine tune your text perfectly, which is kind of the main feature and probably what I would discuss the most if I were to do a video review. Either way, it was a total flop at stuff like Walter White, which was pretty interesting because Midjourney is really good at Walter White, but Trump and SpongeBob looked really good. So you guys will have to let me know if you want to see more from this thing. And I've got a brief mention over here from Commanderu on Twitter. We actually have image to video and video to video in a Google collab. It's only collab pro, but it is open source. So this is pretty impressive. Runway ML and Pika Labs do very similar technology, but that's all closed source and behind these paywalls, this is fully open source. And it looks like the image to video and the video to video is coming out pretty good from these little sample demos. It's pretty exciting stuff. I'll link this down below if you guys want to follow up more on it. Maybe I'll do a full video if I can figure out how to get this working pretty easily. Still, some nice free image to video that is open source is really exciting. To finish up here, we're going to move into some audio AI stuff. Play HT, which is a 11 Labs text-to-speech competitor, they are actually releasing their 2.0 conversational beta, and you have to sign up for beta access. I actually do have beta access to it, but I'm waiting to make a video on it because apparently they're upgrading their models soon, and I should wait. That's literally what they told me. But apparently it does conversational speech in real time. And take a look at their demo. When I read the script, I remember thinking, I haven't read something this original in a very long time. You know, I've been so busy. I'm working on a lot of things that are important to me. You know, I've been so busy. <laughs> I'm working on a lot of things that are important to me. I've been so busy. I'm working on a lot of things that are important to me. You know, I've been so busy. I'm working on a lot of things that are important to me. It's a lot of Vous savez, j'ai été très occupée. Je travaille sur beaucoup de choses qui sont importantes pour moi. Weißt du, ich war so beschäftigt. Ich arbeite an vielen Dingen, die mir wichtig sind. Come experience our new voice model for free at play.ht. Pretty impressive, if I do say so myself. 11 Labs is going to be hard to beat, but 11 Labs doesn't have that feature where you can add different emotions to what you're saying or even type in a new emotion. So that's exciting stuff. Play HT has been something that people have told me to make a video about before, saying, you know, it's, it's really good, it's the best out there. The voice cloning, in my opinion, is not as good as 11 Labs, but we'll see when this uh, Play HT 2.0 comes out of beta. And speaking of, I just did a video on this yesterday, 11 Labs released their multilingual V2 and the whole company actually came out of beta. Like I said, check out the video for the full review. This was a really fun one, but this thing speaks nearly 30 languages. The voice cloning is just insanely good. And they also discussed the professional voice cloning that you can have done, which fine tunes a model on a specific voice. We also tested that out and it's really, really awesome. So yeah, 11 Labs is also advancing their game. I'll show you their demo as well. 
Just imagine, folks, a festival where the world comes to. Just imagine. Just imagine, folks, a festival where the world comes to dance, dine, and、uh, share stories from our homelands. Aha!、Uh-huh. Wouldn't that be something? Hmm. 그게 재밌겠다. 아리랑을 노래하며 전통을 공유하는 것도 좋겠네. Que me exijase de tu sirtaki que tan ostima musaka. Autara, maglutu tayo nang adobo at lechon para salahat. Och vi kan också visa upp vår mitsomastong och dansa runt den. Aha. وماذا عن رقصة صحراوية تحت النجوم وبالطبع حمص وطبق فلافل. そして ساكورا の下での舞踏会に皆さんを招待するのはどうでしょう。お、так。あ、мы могли б танцювати під звуки бандури і співати легенди наших предків. Та, і звісно, як на щет вишневого пирога і горілки, щоб підігріти душі. Ха-ха. Ве табіки, баклава. Культурлерин бир арая гельмесинин татлі бир яно олмалі. Now and for Hay to strobe baffles and the clump and dance neat. Absolutely. From Arirang to Beklava, our shared laughter, stories, and delicious treats will indeed make this a global fiesta to remember. Pretty impressive stuff. Eleven Labs has been that text-to-speech place to go. They do it so well, and they're easily the most consistent. So we'll see if PlayHT can offer up any competition anytime soon. Anyways, that's what I've got for you guys. I know there was a few more little tidbits and AI news pieces that weren't included in this video, but that's again why I recommend you guys follow the Discord server, get joined on that, and also follow me on Twitter because when I see something on Twitter, I retweet it, and that's where you get some good AI news as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.